Elon Musk's spaceflight empire, SpaceX, is in the middle of a lengthy licensing procedure with the Federal Aviation Administration to determine whether it would be able to launch its massive starship into orbit from Boca Chica. Meanwhile, it's going about its business, testing out a variant of its super-powered Raptor engine. On Thursday, SpaceX released a video showing its Raptor vacuum engine, which is integrated inside a Starship prototype, igniting for the first time in the dusk light at Starbase, Texas. While this is technically the second test of the vacuum, it is the first time SpaceX has done it while the engine is still attached to the rocket. In this video, we will talk about the new SpaceX Raptor engine. But first, a big welcome to all newcomers to this channel. We post daily updates from the world of space. Let's get started. On Thursday evening, SpaceX took another step towards verifying the rocket engine technology that will power its Starship rocket. Engineers at the company ignited a vacuum version of the Raptor engine, linked to the Starship upper stage for the first time. Test firing, which took place at dusk in South Texas, lasted barely a few seconds. However, it appears to have been a success, ticking off another box in a sequence of technical tests SpaceX must complete before launching Starship on a super heavy rocket for an orbital test flight. This could happen in early 2022. Of course, SpaceX has previously tested their Starship vehicle with Raptor engines. During some prototype test flights, the vehicle soared to around 10 kilometers using up to three sea level Raptor engines. It's quite another thing to test a rocket with a Raptor version optimized for operations in space. Rocket engines have several components, but the largest and most visible is the nozzle, which directs the flow of exhaust gas. This exhaust is produced in the combustion chamber, where the oxidizer and propellant burn. This exhaust gas is then accelerated by forcing it through a narrow hole, known as a throat. The exhaust expands as it enters the nozzle, where the longer and broader the nozzle is, the faster the exhaust goes. Foster gasoline coming from a rocket engine is advantageous since it provides more thrust. More thrust implies your rocket can carry more weight. As a result, a larger nozzle indicates better performance. So why aren't all rocket engines equipped with massive nozzles? Because of flow separation, which occurs when the flow of gas inside an engine separates from the nozzle walls. Turbulence and vibrations may result in a result of this. In the worst case situation, it might cause the engine to explode. There is no absolute value for when this occurs. However, the risk of flow separation increases when the exhaust pressure exiting the nozzle falls below 50% of the ambient pressure. This isn't an issue in space, since air pressure is nearly zero. At sea level, however, the larger the nozzle, the higher the risk of flow separation. The most typical solution is to construct a rocket's first stage with engines tuned for sea level performance and upper stage with vacuum optimized engines. For example, the Falcon 9 rocket features a first stage with nine Merlin engines with smaller nozzles that conduct all of the work in the lower atmosphere and an outer space Merlin vacuum engine with a considerably larger nozzle. Now, is there an alternative approach to any of this? NASA's Space Shuttle used a mixed technique. Its main engines, which fired continuously from launch to orbit, sacrificed performance on both ends. The shuttle ended up with a nozzle that was as huge as possible at sea level. It really pushed the flow separation limits without going over the edge, but much smaller than would be desirable in a vacuum. The upper stage of SpaceX's Starship is designed to fly in both dense atmospheres and space. It intends to address the nozzle size dilemma by flying with three sea level raptors and three vacuum raptors. The test on Thursday was the first time one of the vacuum engines was mounted to a Starship vehicle and fired. The most experienced upper stage engine, Aerojet Rocketdyne's RL-10, has a high expansion ratio, meaning that its nozzle size is substantially bigger than its throat. As a result, this engine can only be tested in a massive vacuum chamber on the ground. SpaceX's test on Thursday took place outside, a few feet above sea level in South Texas. So how did SpaceX accomplish the vacuum-optimized engine test fire without destroying it? In response to this question, Elon Musk stated on Twitter that the problem was handled by designing the Raptor engine to provide extremely high chamber pressure. The engine is also not yet fully optimized for a vacuum. Thus, there was enough leeway to keep flow separation from causing instability. 
This enabled SpaceX to execute their test on Thursday without incident. The Vacuum Raptor engine survived the test, which took place roughly three weeks after it had left SpaceX's Los Angeles area rocket facility for McGregor. On September 4th, SpaceX stated that the groundbreaking engine had been delivered to the Texas testing facility. The test was described as full length in a tweet last night. The length of the burn is known. The tweet includes a 15 second video that fades to black with the Vacuum Raptor still running. The Vacuum Raptor engine is identical to the sea level version, but it has a much larger nozzle that enhances efficiency in the space environment. Elon Musk, SpaceX's founder and CEO, has stated that the Starship will have three Raptors of each variant. These six engines will propel the 165-foot-tall Starship to far-flung locations such as the Moon and Mars. The vehicle will be powered long enough to launch itself off the surface of those two rocky worlds, but it will require assistance to escape Earth's deep gravity well. So, Starship will leave our planet atop a massive rocket named Super Heavy, which will be driven by 30 sea-level raptors. There was also a second static test recorded. Before SpaceX can launch Starship into orbit, there is still a long way to go. SpaceX has been preparing for the next prototype launch after a series of successful test flights that reached a height of roughly 6 miles. However, the FAA is presently soliciting public views on a drought as required by the National Environmental Policy Act before granting SpaceX a license for the maiden orbital flight of Starship. This period is expected to finish on November the 1st, after which the FAA will publish its final assessment. If the administration requests a full environmental impact statement, we may see a lot more ground test firings. According to SpaceX, both the Super Heavy and Starship will be entirely reusable. Musk anticipates the pair substantially lowering the cost of travel, making ambitious goals like Mars colonization economically achievable. SpaceX is looping towards the final version of the Starship through a series of prototypes, some of which have already taken flight. The single-engine SN5 and SN6 vehicles recently completed 500-foot test flights, and the three-engine SN8 is preparing for a 12-mile trip into the near future. It seems like SpaceX is nearly towards the last step towards their big achievements on space travel. With all of this, we wrap up today's video. For similar updates, make sure to subscribe to our channel to be part of our team. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again tomorrow with more updates.